Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Ron the Valleys podcast. So this week's guest, I am joined by Mr. Colin R. Parsons. And you've been very successful doing your authors. Mm. So would you like to tell everyone about the books that you've done so far? Uh, I've, I've got quite a back catalogue now. I started off with Wizard's Kingdom, which is a trilogy. and uh, It's um, illustrated. Yeah. So the, I started off with the original one, Wizard's Kingdom, then he went The Obelisk of Ashmar, Jirax Darkness, and that trilogy first came about, oh, 2005. God. Just going back quite a bit now. And I was lucky enough starting off that there was a new bookshop opened up in the Ronda yeah. called uh, Borders Bookstore. Right. In Tabard Green, I don't know if you remember that. No, I don't. It's actually a new look now. Oh, we are. So, uh, and it's an American company. They mm. came into the UK. Uh, I was working in a factory at the time, and they wanted um, a children's author to launch the children's section. Right. So, uh, I happened to be working in a warehouse in a factory. The IT guy came into me, long story, but. Yes, fine. I, the IT guy came into me. Could, I, could he have a signed copy of Wizard's Kingdom for his wife? Uh, his wife just passed an interview to start work in Borders Bookstore. She took the book in and she said, look, uh, to her manager, uh, we're looking for a, an author, a children's author, to launch the children's section. What about this guy? So the manager said, phone me up. Would you like to launch the children's section? So uh, in 2005, I went there. They opened the shop up. They had all the American suits and everything there, balloons and everything. And I, I launched the children's section. And um, it took off from there. I did the first book, then the second book, and the third book, so that was that trilogy. Cool. Then I did The Curious World of Sherry Vendor, which was a two book set yeah. based on World Book Day. So um, that went out there. Uh, I, I strayed a bit into sci fi because I'm into Doctor Who and Star Wars and Star Trek. Mm. So I did a book called Crank Tech One about a robot that trashes Cardiff. Yes. Um, and I just went on from there. Now I was doing book signings in all the Borders bookstores. Yeah. So my claim to fame is over 10 years, my wife and I, because she's done them all with me, we did, uh, in 10 years we did Borders and Waterstones, but we did 600 book signings. Oh my gosh. In 10 years. So each book that was coming out, we were launching it from these different stores. Borders went out of business after three years, maybe four years, I don't know what happened. So I took, I went to Waterstones and independent bookshops. Yes. So in six years I did 600 book signings and sold obviously thousands of copies of books yeah but we traveled everywhere every saturday was booked up it could, it could be carlisle it could be <laughs> liverpool it could be cornwall so it was a lot of driving and yeah a lot of bookshops and it went from there so um it went from wizard's kingdom to the curious world to crank and then i, I got a publishing deal with a company called pegasus elliot mckenzie right they published house of dark which came out in 2013 i think then they wanted my second book then, which was from Disc. Okay. Went from Disc to Ghosted. And then from Ghosted, my new book came out about a month and a half, two months ago, called Wizard's Exile. Yeah. So I've gone from Wizard's Kingdom all the way to Wizard's Exile, which is a different book. So I've got um, 11 books out now, because I brought a picture book out this year as well. Yeah. Called Amaya's Imagination, which I, I based on my granddaughter. I saw that. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great book. And so... Um, in 2013, I, also, I not only had uh, a book traditionally published, I also left my job and become a fully-fledged author. Um, a company, an agency called Authors Abroad took me on and they started booking me into schools. So since 2013, I think it is, six years now I've been doing schools all over the country. So I've, I've done uh, maybe five, six hundred schools in the last six years. but. Um, I go from, oh, I could be anywhere, it could be London, Leeds, Ch um, oh, it could be absolutely Cornwall, it could be um, Cheshire. So that's what I do, I do about 40, 45 schools a year. God, that's amazing. And I travel everywhere. I mean, I think I start in September now, I'm in Stevenage, and then, um, oh, I, I don't know where I am altogether, I've got a dining <laughs> phone. So that's what I do, I travel around, I do workshops in schools and presentations, and um, I do the book launches and everything else. So. So what made you start, so obviously when you've done the first book, because obviously writing your books and the style of books that you do, you have to have a lot of imagination. Yeah. So what, what made you decide to do it in the, in the first place, like write your own book? Well, I used to write short stories. Right. Lots of people write short stories. So I had the stories there and I didn't know what to do with them. 
and um, family always tell you your stuff is good. Um, yeah. Even though you know, your auntie Olive or your mother say, oh, these are brilliant, and they could be awful. And, <laughs> and, they, and they were awful, to be honest. They were raw. So I, I realised back then that I needed these, these stories to be edited and proofread by a, by a professional. And the only professional I knew back then was um, my local English head of English in primary school, right. in Williamstown Primary, yeah. which is not there anymore. There's a brand new one there. It's been flattened and they moved it. So uh, the head of English then is now the head of the school now. And she used to proofread and edit my short stories. They weren't children's, because I'm initially a children's author. They were adult fiction stories. Yeah. And sometimes a little bit of horror in there, suspense, who done it and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so she used to proofread and edit them and said they were brilliant. She, she was so scared at one that she, when she was putting the milk bottles out, back in the day when they used to put the milk bottles yeah. out, she was looking on the street in case somebody was coming after her and she shut the door. Oh my God. So she said, these stories are brilliant. She said, um, uh, you, you need to get them out there. And then she got in contact with us one day for a parent-teacher meeting. And we went in. My name's Colin R. Parsons. My middle name is Ryan. My youngest son is Ryan. And she said, uh, parent teacher meeting with my wife, Ryan is falling behind his English. He's playing football and rugby, which he did, and he's playing Xbox. His English grades are dropping. He needs to read more. And I was sitting there and I said, um, what do I do then? She, and she said, look, I said, he's got a load of books in his bedroom. And I said, he's not reading them either because he's a 10 year old boy and, and boys, well, even girls. Youngsters, they don't, do they? So she said, look, you write brilliant short stories. I proofread them for you. Write him a book. He loves wizards. Why don't you write him a book? And I said, well, I don't know how. I said, you figure it out and try and get a book out there. So all I did, and this is my claim to fame, I, I wrote 10 short stories, but I linked all the characters in the plot. Right. Um, I got a title, because I, I, um, he likes wizards, I thought, well, where do wizards come from? And I thought to myself, well, um, I know wizards like Merlin, they come from caves, or the king has got a sidekick who lives in the North Tower of the kingdom. Yeah. And I thought, well, wizards come from kingdoms. So being naive, I went onto Google, which was very small at the time, a small search engine, and I tapped in Wizards Kingdom. And what came back to me was um, Wizards of the Lost Kingdom, Lost Kingdom of Wizards, Wizards and Witches, Merlin the Wizard, but no Wizards Kingdom. So I thought, well, I got a title. Yeah. So I thought, I'll, I'll try and get it out there. So I sent the manuscript off to uh, loads of publishers. My best friend is an artist, and he said, look, I'll do some illustrations for you if you want. So we did the illustrations, and I was a bit naive at the time because it was the height of Harry Potter. Yeah, and you've got to watch it, doesn't clash. Yeah. And it was the height of Discworld with Terry Pratchett. No publisher was looking for a wizarding story. They'd done them all, they were looking for the next best thing. I was naive, I didn't have a clue. So there was a small publisher who were, uh, called a vanity publisher back then, which meant you had to pay to get the book out there. Right. It was called self-publishing, it's now called indie publishing. But if a publisher charges you, then you get the big stigma of you've paid to have a book out there, it's not going to be any good. So um, I actually paid quite a few thousand pounds to get Wizards Kingdom up and running. And the rule was back then, if you sold 50 copies, you've done really well and there will be a lot. Right. Well, as it happened, the book was pretty good. Um, borders opened up and I started selling copies. I went to, I think it was 45 border stores over the years. They started ordering them in, till in the end, I think the Wizards Kingdom trilogy, which are three of them now, they're all mine now, I have the software back because the publisher went under. Yeah. The three of them were self-published, and they've sold about 25,000 copies. Oh my God. So if Penguin or HarperCollins had bought it initially, they probably would have sold millions by now. Yeah. That's not me blowing my own trumpet, I've got the actual, I've got the, uh, uh, the actual, uh, the amount of books that I sold and the shops were ordering them. So that's what got me going. I couldn't do that all over again now because it's a different world now. Because everything, everything went digital with Kindle and stuff. Yeah. So um, all the books, and that's where I started. I did the Wizards Kingdom thing. They took off. Um, then I did the Curious World. And then, like I said, I went to Watstones. And then I started doing the schools. Mm. I don't do many bookshops now. But the schools, I do workshops and presentations. Yeah. And then I do a book signing at the end of the day. Oh, and that's the book sales then go to the school so I, I do I think about 1200 books a year I, I actually sign off and sell so yeah um, I'm doing pretty good as an author 
But if I was with a high publishing house, probably would have done millions of copies like J.K. Rowling or David Williams or whatever. But right. that's kind of where I come from. Yeah. So it's, I think it's amazing. And obviously the style of work you do is fiction. Yeah. So, yeah, I just can't get over because like I talk about like doing your own story and things like that, and like like Harry Potter and things. you've got to have such a good imagination. But like you said, your friend and the illustrations. Did you have to explain to them what you was, yeah. what your vision was? Do you know what it's, I mean? Cause it's difficult when, when you. If I if I was good, I, I always explain this as Ed Sheeran because I know it's <laughs> nothing to do with. But Ed Sheeran is a singer songwriter. He's he's a musician. So yeah. whatever he produces, he can he can uh, he can tailor the, the music to the lyrics. Yeah. So he can set if the word is going to be a long word, he can tailor it in with it with his music. So if I could draw, then I could envisage the actual story, and I could set each scene to what I'm writing. I can't stick men and stuff. I, I can't really draw anything. <laughs> so my talents are where the writing comes in. Yeah. So um, when my friend said, well, I, because my friend actually said to me, his name's Derek Jones. He's still, he's still my best friend. He told me at the time, he said, Carl, he said, be honest, I'll do these illustrations. You're not going to sell many books. He said, because um, you've got big publishers out there and people who self-publish don't sell. And he's true enough, they don't. It's just, I pushed harder. Right. And, and he, he did, and I said, look, I need a scene, I need wizards to be in a battle here, and there's a castle, and he'd send me proofs. Right. And I said, oh, that's brilliant. So we kind of worked around each other. Yeah. But when you do a full straight novel, it's only the cover design. There's no illustrations inside. Right. Because Wizard's Kingdom is an illustrated trilogy. The only other illustrated thing I've done is the Maya's imagination thing. Yeah. All the others are normal novels. So the cover is done by the publisher and all the inside is just text, isn't it? So right. all yeah. they've got to do is depict the cover. But if you're working with somebody and you want a certain scene, like I'd ring him up or somebody and say, you, you, the picture's brilliant, but it's not exactly, the, the creature's a bit shorter and, yeah. and his eyes are wider and he got pointy at you. Oh, okay. And he'd work it around that. Yeah. So it is difficult. If if I could picture myself in my head, which I can't. If I could draw it, then I could get it smack on. Yeah. But, but I I wasn't meant for drawing. If I drew a horse, now it'd look like a big rat. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it kind of doesn't. Work. No, really. It's not because like I think even if you did or didn't have pictures, I think everyone's vision is different as well, mm. isn't it? Like when you read a book, my my perception of something mm. is totally different to yours, yeah. which I think that's good because it's that's what people read books tonight yeah. to, for their imagination. And obviously, I've got to bring up, you do the YouTube channel, yeah, yeah. which has took off amazingly as well, isn't it? I sent a video off um, early this morning, so I've got, um, I, I, I've got a YouTube channel for a while, because my nephews came on to me and they said, I'm going to call you, you've got to have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and I, I, I can, I can, I'm on Facebook, which you do Facebook, that takes, I've, I've had to pull away a bit because it just sucks you in, doesn't it? Yeah, it and does. I, I did the Twitter thing, which I, I don't get far on Twitter, to be honest, I don't get many followers and stuff. Not and then everybody said Instagram. And then, oh, I don't know, Tumblr and all these things, I didn't know. So he said, but YouTube is the thing that everybody's doing now. So I threw videos on there. If I am um, to um, advertise the one, the book fair. Yeah. And anything else, if I was walking, so I might say to my wife, look, record me and I can do a trailer. So I, I threw them on there and I'd have five views or eight views or something. And then I'd put one on in a couple of months and have another couple of views. But then one day I thought to myself, I do lots and lots of workshops in schools. And, like I said, I do over 45, 50 schools a year. And if it's primary schools or if it's secondary, because sometimes I'll do secondary schools, I'll do year seven and eight. Yeah. But if I do a workshop with a child, they'll always come up with once upon a time. Or once oh, there was yeah. a boy named Bob. <laughs> or uh, one stormy night or something like that. And I think, well, one or once isn't used anymore. That's gone. Disney will put once upon a time in their films or a book they bring out for uh, Beauty and the Beast or something, but uh, you don't start stories or you pick any, I mean we're in a library today, you pick any uh, book up in there and it wouldn't start one, yeah, no, no, one no. day Fred walked to the park. So I thought, what if I put together some videos, easy ways to start a story, I only cover 30 odd kids per school I do. I mean there's millions of children out there in the UK who um, don't know how to start stories off. Yeah. You've got the kids who are really able, because I do able and reluctant writer workshops. 
You've got the able kids who are really good at writing, and you've got the reluctant kids who, like me, reluctant at reading, and I was a reluctant writer when I was a kid. And now I've written all these books. If I can do it, they can do it. But yeah. even the, the well-abled kids have difficulty starting the story off. So I thought, if I put a string and load of videos together, then I can set off how to start the story off without putting one saw one day in there and see how it takes off. So I didn't know if anybody was going to follow it. I think I had 70, 72 followers on YouTube. Yeah, it's gone crazy. I've seen it's gone well, mad. Well, what I do, and I do an event, so I obviously advertise the fact I've got the YouTube channel and if they want to subscribe, they can. So what I did, um, I thought, okay, I recorded something and I didn't want the length of the videos to be like 40, 50 minutes. I want them to be short, so because kids got short attention spans. Yeah. They're all on YouTube, and if they get bored, they go on to the next thing. So I thought, if I use something colourful, and just put a couple of examples on each video, which, I, which I'm doing, but then I thought, the background is bland. I haven't got a room which has got a nice wall. So I thought, okay, what, what about... So I looked on YouTube for green screens and stuff. Nice. And I thought, I thought you've got to be expensive. So I ended up putting a one card green on the background yeah. and then I got an iMovie on my laptop which I didn't know I had <laughs> so I looked on YouTube how to use iMovie yeah. and how to, to, to do a green screen so I projected it and when I played it back I thought that looks really professional then I noticed my body was kind of grimy right. I thought I need lighting so I looked up how to do lighting and then I bought like really cheap lighting like the studios use. Yeah, I've got some of those, they're cheap and good, didn't they? They're yeah. fabulous, well, isn't it? for what you need, so I put them, set it up and then I learned how to edit and splice and all that. So all the mistakes, all the ums and ahs and errors, I started to cut out. So, but it takes hours to do the editing, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it takes but, uh, hours. For two and a half minutes. But when I played it back, I thought, that looks really good. But then people were viewing it, and kids were coming back, and we said, oh, what a brilliant video, I can't wait for the next one. Mm. And I thought, well, I've only put one up. And I put in, <laughs> and I put in one, and then so I checked out other YouTubers, and they said, well, if you put one video up, then put one a couple of days after, just to introduce the next one. So I yeah. started doing that. So I've got four videos up now, I, th I think I'm nearly at a thousand views. Yeah, it has. Um, and people are, are and my wife works in a shop, and there was a little girl who came in a couple of weeks ago after the first video went in, and she said, look, my husband has done these videos. Why, why don't you check it out? Okay, she said. Well, she went home, checked it out, came back. I watched this six times. So, <laughs> and I can't wait for the next one. So I thought, if I've caught her attention, if I can catch 20, 30, 100, their friends, their cousins, or whatever, maybe I can get a few thousand. And maybe, because they've got to write stories in school. Yeah. And if they go to school and they think, and the teachers say, wow, your beginnings are getting really good. Well, I'm watching the Colin R. Parsons YouTube videos. Yeah. Well, if the school is cotton on, maybe then the subscriber rate will lift. Yeah, definitely. I think it's really good because my daughter, in school, they use YouTube in school for loads of things, like maths, anything like that. I didn't know like that. that. Yeah. yeah, well, they do. Because my, my daughter comes home and she's very good on the iPad using YouTube. Yeah. But I would much rather watch, yeah, one, one of your mm. channels, learning some productive than yeah. watching just a silly yeah. video just to pass the time away in school. So yeah. I, I de when I, when she goes back in September, I definitely would be recommending that because I think it's ideal. Yeah. And my daughter, I know a few kids, they, she, she struggles with reading. Yeah. I don't know why, only this year. So I think I, she'll definitely be, I'll put it on after for her to well, give it a go. That's the audience I'm targeting. Yeah. Because um, you've got loads, of, I, I see them when, when I do workshops. The kids are there and they're like, especially if I do a reluctant writer's workshop, which is the kids, they've got all the ideas bouncing about in their heads. They just can't get it to the end of the pen or onto the page. Yeah. And then we all go, and, and it's multicultural now, and I, I find with multicultural, they've got old ideas. And um, it's, it's there like, oh, one day, one day it was sunny down the park. And I thought, <laughs> oh, okay. And, and instead of doing that, what did they say? Um, Kevin was sitting on the swing. Yeah. He was glancing across the park and he saw this girl on a bike and she looked lost and the story starting to build up this is what I do in my workshop all I'm doing is transferring my school workshop onto a video screen yeah. and I'm starting off with six episodes of how to start the story once that finishes which is in two episodes time I'm doing your five senses that's going to be the next one I'm going to introduce which I haven't introduced yet because um, you need your five senses to get a story up and running 
what you smell, what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you touch. And it, I, it brings the characters to life. Because if you're like in, I don't know, if you're in a field and you're on the barbecue, you can smell the strong, pungent smell of barbecue. You can also smell, also smell the manure from the, the cows in the field and yeah. the grass being freshly cut. And you can see the, the different colours and things and whatever's happening. And you can hear dogs barking and birds flying over. Your senses are working all the time. If you're, yeah. if you're in the theme park, you can feel the steel bar pulling the, the bar on the roller coaster. Or you can feel the serviette when you're eating a burger or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so much detail. And this it? is what I put into my story. So I'll do the, the how to start the story, then I'll do all the five senses, and then I'll do how to put a twist in the plot, and then I'll do um, inescapable situations you manage to get out of. Then I'll put how to end the story. I just do in all that to be honest and see if it'll cotton on. Yeah, mm. it's amazing. I I I think you're you're YouTube videos are amazing and I think the schools they should you should definitely I think you should target more schools like on Facebook because yeah. there is schools on Facebook my schools on Facebook I would just send them a message and say look this is what I do and just like you say because you can't well you could but obviously you take forever but if you, could, if you went to all schools yeah, no, you'd be yeah. travelling all the time wouldn't you yeah. but it'd be easy if they just obviously you could go there one day as a, as a workshop like you said but it's nice if it's ongoing videos yeah. they can keep there maybe do it once, once a week if, they're in, if they have the reading look once a week we look at Colin's videos well, and on and me carry on well what, what I'm doing at the end of each of my videos I'm saying if there's any teachers watching this or parents tell the teachers and right at the end of each video I've got my website yeah. And um, so you can contact me through there. I know already my wife's cousin, she, she's a teacher, she works in Kent. When she goes back now, because we're in summer, the summer holidays now, so a lot of people are away. But in September, she's going to tell her friends and her teachers, and they network in meetings yeah. um, to see if they can implement them in the school. Because I can imagine if it does take off, there are videos, because I've looked on YouTube, there are videos with certain instruction videos out there which boring after two minutes yeah mine are i i, I chuck my my quirky personality in there <laughs> I, i've got the background which is like a library kind of colorful setting but i just um add little mannerisms while i'm doing it i'm all hands i know that's what i do anyway oh that's me i always my mother always said if i cut off my hands i wouldn't be able to talk yeah exactly <laughs> but but i i um and the videos are literally like i said i give them four instances I give the information at the end and I say, look, that's it, the next video, look out for the next video. And um, I'm having a bit of fun with them with it, but I'm, I, I mean, the six episodes for Easy Ways to Start a Story, there's 24 start, starts for the stories there, which um, they can think, okay, well, if I do that one, implement that one, I can start my own story yeah. in my own way. And you don't have to start in the park, you can start with a little cereal in the house, or you can start by walking down the aisle of a supermarket. Or, um, I don't know, you could be in a picnic area somewhere. Or um, you could be walking around the museum when you see something. And I will also do a, a length of videos on all the W's and H. Why, when, where, who, what. Yeah. Because if I'm um, stuck in the middle of a story, I use all the W's and H right now. I even use them in my workshop. So if I'm stuck in a story, I've got nobody to ask. I'm on my own in my study. So yeah. I say to myself, where are you? Oh, I'm in the middle of a rocky desert. Why am I there? W, why am I there? Because we go into tool town with Angie, because Angie's a mechanic. Oh, why are we going there? She needs a new tool for a tool belt. How are we going to get there? H, how are we going to get there? On a jet propelled bike. And I, I build the store like a painting. That's then, mad, that's mad. It, yeah, that's, that's incredible how you, you think like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much detail to think about. Yeah. It, you could, obviously, yeah, you, I can imagine you write, write, write all the time. I bet you are like that. Well, well you've, got, you've got a... I mean, I had a brilliant compliment the other day. Wizards Kingdom has been out 15 years now. And uh, a couple of months ago, I was doing an event somewhere, because I do comic cons and I do uh, literary events and whatever. And this guy came up to me. And I think he was in like a leisure centre sports area. And we all had tables there. And he came up to Colin, um, I'd buy a new book, but he said, I got Wizards Kingdom, the three books there. I said, right. Bought it a few years ago and I'm reading it to my children. And I said, I got three kids and they're all in bed and I'm reading it to them. I've got the lights kind of uh, the lamp on and I'm reading it. And he said, your stories are so vivid. We feel like we're inside the forest and you can hear mm -hmm. the leaves and you can... Um, 
You can hear the footsteps of the of the wizards as they walk in through the crest. And it's, it, it's like we're inside the studio. And I said, well, that's the way I feel when I'm writing them. I've yeah. got to be at one with the story. And yeah. you've got to feel like um, if one person's got a tear coming from his eye, why is he or she so upset? And what incident has happened? And then you build the world around. And I walk through my stories, but I'm carrying you with me. And if I haven't done that, then I haven't done my job. And you can skim through a story and say, oh, I've been chased by dinosaurs, we run down here. But when the dinosaur is chasing after you, the ground shakes with every thud. The vibration there. You can feel the hot breath in the back of your neck. You can turn and see the long teeth almost piercing your arm. And I put all that and I go over the stories and I go over them and get them bigger and bigger. So yeah. if I do 20 chapters, I will throw a thousand words in each chapter. So that's 20,000 words, and then I'll build them up another thousand until I got 3,000 words per chapter. So that's 60,000, that's roughly a novel. Yeah. Sometimes it'll go 65, 70. But by then, I've delved so deep into the characters that you know them. And I, I can tell you this now, that um, when I wrote Wizard's Kingdom, in the last book, because we had five wizards in there, I got to know them so well, they were like family. They were like uncles and aunties, like Gandalf. Then. And I had to kill... Um, a character off nice. and I was writing it on a Sunday afternoon and I always remember my wife came up to me and, I was writing it, and she said what are you doing and I was crying oh. and I was there she said what are you doing I said I've had to kill that character off so we had it from the beginning right to the end right. and she looked at it she burst out crying as well comment <laughs> I said the, the only way I can culminate and finish this story off is if something happens and something's got to change and I've got to kill that off and she was devastated, and it was like we lost an uncle or something. Yeah, because because you knew you knew that character, yeah. you created that character yeah. as well, didn't you? It's, and then it's, it's going like. But it could be sitting right next to me. And I mean, that's how close you've got to be. Mm. It's um, on the other side of it. Uh, I tried to kill off a horse because the horse is magical and wizard's kingdom. Oh God! Go. And my wife said, "No, you can't." Well, I killed off. <laughs> she said, "You can kill off ten thousand men, but don't you kill a gerbil." <laughs> I'm like Gallo, I'm worse with animals. Who kill an animal? Like, I'm gone, I am, I'm terrible. It's, it's, animals are ones you can't kill off, so I couldn't kill, I had to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's, you've, you've got to get kind of deep into the characters. And, I, and like I said, I'm 11 books in, um, and 11 books is nothing to authors. These, these authors write 30, 40, 50 books, and I want to do that eventually. But you've got to really connect with them. Yeah. And, the audience have got to believe in the characters. That's why my readers come back again and again. They, they, it's strange now because I'm a small author from the Rhonda. I might do a school in a couple of weeks' time in Liverpool. And I go to Liverpool and I have the kids there and perhaps most of them won't know me. Then some of them will come up and say, How so dark, I've read that. Now, for somebody who's not famous, to have their book in Liverpool read by somebody um, which maybe I've never even done a book sign in Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But the, the publishing house distributes the books all over. You can order them from uh, Amazon or you can order them in a bookshop. So obviously, I was there the other day, Eastbourne or somewhere, and Ghosted was being read by one of the audience and they had it from the library. So the books are, are out there. And when people come on to me and say, wow, I've read that, it's incredible. I've got to read your next one. And they, they're awestruck as if I'm like a top J.K. Rowling and, and that's how you feel. Yeah. And to be honest, I've worked hard enough and I've got, like I said, 11 books behind me now. So um, I, I am getting up the ladder. Yeah, definitely. So um, and people do recognise the name called Mar Parsons now, yeah. especially doing the other platforms of the YouTube thing and websites and doing the book fair and things as well. But um, yeah, there you go, that's where that was. It's amazing. And obviously I was going to recommend as well, obviously with the children's um, YouTube channels, so say like some children wrote a few stories, would you ever ask them to maybe like send a copy to yourself? Well, I could do that, but the amount of schools and stuff that I do, yeah, I'd, I be, guess. I'd be inundated with stories and things. And between trying to run, like, at this very moment in time, I have got kind of, because I've, I've done the episodes for the YouTube channel thing up until October. So I've got videos done every Monday to the middle of October. Um, I look after my granddaughter as well in certain weeks, so she takes a lot of time out because my wife works. Mm. Um, I've got 
the Ron the Book Fair, which I'm organising, and that comes once a year, and there's a lot of work goes into that. I'm a writer, I'm supposed to be writing. So, um, at this moment in time, I've got this week, I've got a free week now, so I've got to uh, deal with a manuscript with a publisher who's waiting for this new uh, manuscript to come out. So, I've got to work on that. Yeah. And other ideas are popping as well. So, I, I wouldn't have time to look at, at stories that could be, I don't know, 10,000 words long or something. Yeah. I just have got the time to do it. Mm. Um, I. I in the beginning, it was just me and, and one book, and then I was writing short stories. Now, it's preparing to go to schools yeah. in September, because I'm a self-employed author. I've got all the schools booked already lined up for me. I've got, like I said, the YouTube channel. I've got the London Book Fair coming up. I've got manuscripts. I've got everything going on. And I'm finding I'm not writing as much as I should be. In the last two months, I haven't written anything. Yeah, because cause you've got to attend all the, event, yeah, the events and, yeah. as well. Yeah, I've just come back from the Foam Comic Con, which was on the weekend. Uh, I got a free week this week, and I think I've got, uh, week after the next one, I've got, I've got the, I don't know, the Murtha Farmers Market, which is a two day event, which is Sunday and Bank Holiday Monday. Right. I've also got a book launch in um, Cover to Cover Bookshop in Mumbles for my new book, Wizards Exile. And right. I think that's, that's TV, Swansea Bay are going to be recording it. So there's a media thing going on there. So I try and keep up with all the stuff that's going on and try and promote it as much as I can. Yeah. Because in the middle of uh, August now, which we get into, uh, I'll be putting posters out and right. flyers and the big vinyl banners for the Run the Book Fair. Yeah. Because that's a big event which takes a lot of my time at Bobbinsas and I can concentrate more on what I should be doing. But um, I know you want to ask me about the Run the Book Fair. Oh, no, it's fine. I, I, um, I'm attending that as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. I yeah, well, everyone I've had people, I've, I've, I've had authors, this is the fifth year of running it. I've had authors, some authors have dropped out who can't do it this year. But this, this year I've had a, I put a website together which um, somebody said, you've got to have a website. The events page is fine on Facebook, but you need a website where they can see everything's going on. Yeah. I didn't know where to start with that, but I got a free one, because mm -hmm. I did Raft recently, which you were there. Yes. And Craig Roberts said, well, Weebly, you can do one free on Weebly. Right. So I thought, how do you put it together? Because I've never put a website together, but it's quite easy. Yeah, I I've done it. It's not as bad. It wants you to spend a few hours yeah, doing it's it. It's it's then, yeah. So I've put that together, and so, I've had people going through there and authors, can we, can we come to the book fair? Can we? So I've got 22 authors now. Here we are. Coming to this book fair and they're all different genres. And I don't know a lot of them. Is so, it good for you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And it's it good nice? for the readers because they, if they've come for the last two, three years, then they don't want to see the same authors every year. And I've got a lot of different authors coming there. Plus, I've got the author panels and the special guest we've got this year. Yeah. I mean, you've gone in the theatre to do interviews with the authors when you're there. Yeah. But I've got Tim Leban, which is a, a, a massive catch for me, because Tim Leban has done uh, The Silence, which is on Netflix at the moment. He's also done Pay the Ghost with Nicolas Cage, which was on Netflix. Mm. He's, he's done Kong Skull Island. He wrote the adaption for that. Uh, Star Wars, Aliens, um, Firefly. God. He's, he's huge. In fact, when they launched The Silence on Netflix, he went up to LA and he did the launch with Netflix at, at their headquarters. Mm. He's coming, he's doing an hour's interview from three to four with uh, Matt Lees. That should be amazing because Tim is an old friend of mine. I've met him over the years and it's brilliant he's coming along. But I'm also going to have author panels which I'm putting together as well in between. Right. I'm okay. hoping to launch my book for my own book fair as well. What do you think of that? Should I launch my own book? Yeah, from my book fair? Yeah, Is that course. egotistical, do you think? Or? I think that'd be fab. It's a, it's a book fair, so yeah. that's what it's all about. And it's mine, and it's in the Ronda, and it's where I'm from. Yeah, of course, so definitely. I'm, so I'm thinking of um, doing uh, uh, an author interview with me, and then maybe doing a mixed panel, and then doing uh, Tim at the end. So I'm hoping everybody will come along yeah. because um, I get repeat visits, but I'd like to get a lot more. That's why we put in the, the vinyl posters out as well, or st strategically placed on that roundabouts, mm. like by the Mint and uh, by the Heritage Park and stuff, so I can get more people to come in. Yeah. Because I want everybody in the Ronda to come to the book fair because the libraries are struggling. There's no bookshops around here. They do. I know. There, there are kind of books in, in the charity shops. But I want adults and children, reading, not just children, I want adults as well to come along. Uh, there's, there's tea, cake and coffee, which my wife does, there's a little counter there for that. And they can sit in the, in the theatre. Have you been in the theatre? 
I, yeah, I think I've been there once before. Oh, it's, it's amazing because people think of a chapel as being like an old, damp, uh, cobweb windows and that. This place is a theatre and it's all lined with authors and you can walk in there, have a cup of coffee, a bit of cake and you can talk to them. How many people talk to authors? I know you're doing it now. But, <laughs> but um, and, and unless you go to a, a book um, signing, maybe in Waterstones, or go to the Hay Festival, or something like that, you don't get to meet the authors. Yeah. And in the Ronda, they can go to Penny Greg and they can meet the authors there. And they can go into the author panel and sit and listen to how the authors became what they are. And their, their um, journey and how they got there. And it's free entry. And it's free to get into the author panels. If you go to the Hayfest, you've got to pay five, ten pound per talk. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not charging anything, and you can come in. All I'm asking is to come along. And um, I mean, they've got picture book, picture book authors there for the kids to go in there and check them out. They've got authors that do historical, um, fantasy, horror, travelogues, um, chiclet, romance. There's Poetry, there's authors, so if you go in there and think, well, oh, I'm not into sci-fi, well, there's a poetry author, there's a historical yeah. author, there's a trap. Can I, no, for, 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 for everybody. Yeah, exactly. And if you say, well, i got young kids, well, i got five children's authors yet. They all do all different pictures. Well, i got a picture book now. So that's what I want. I want them all to come along. And it's only a day a year. And now it's the fifth year. It, there are getting more and more people learning about it. And yeah. just to walk around and enjoy it. So. I, I think people will go because more like me personally, I got young children. I hate, I know obviously YouTube is good for certain reasons like your channel and things like that, but my daughter is glued to the iPad and yeah. it does, I think that's why she's falling behind in reading. Yeah. So I think, and I know a lot of my friends, I would personally rather take my children to a box fair, yeah. read a book or yeah. do some writing, do some productive rather than go on the iPad, because yeah. me and my husband say, what if one day all the elect electric went, like yeah. no out to see, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Yeah. It box, back to box, that's that's what it is, isn't it? And then I think, I love box, I, I hate the king Kindle, anything like that. So I, I personally think a lot of people, especially my friends, would rather come to a book fair with the children and do that. That's so, it's so well, amazing. I mean, Kindle has got its place, to be honest, because my, my sister-in-law, has she's got... Um, problems with her eyes, and you, and, right. you, and you can make the text larger. Yeah, so, so, yes, and, and, it's, and it's convenient. Like but, and to be honest, Kindle have dropped a bit, and audio books are on their eyes. Yeah, uh, people are listening to them while they're training and walking and driving in the car and journeys and stuff. But um, I've got a second child in it because I got my granddaughter, right? And what I do with her is she stays over at our house for a few days at a time because we look after her for the summer. I, I don't let her watch TV until late afternoon. So yeah. she comes in and um, we I play with blocks with her on the floor. I take her for walks. We build things up. Um, in the afternoon, uh, we do activities and stuff. She can have an hour or two hours watching TV. Or, yeah. or a little tumble tap, she calls it. Or a little tumble tap. Yeah. Which is a, but what I do in the night, then, when she's going to bed, I go in the bedroom with her. And... I've always got to take, well, I take one picture book, but she, we end up with two in the end. <laughs> so I take uh, books up with me, and then um, I'm not allowed to sit on the bed and read it with her anymore. Now I've actually got to climb into the bed, lie down there with the pillow, and she's got to have her head on my shoulder, and I've got to read it to her. Oh, and she likes to flip up stuff as well. So I read the first one, and she say, Bampa, can we have another one before I go to sleep? So I, I've got to read the second one. I, admittedly, she likes Amaya's imagination, because that's her book. Yeah. But she likes room on a broom and the graphic mm. and stuff. And I can feel, and as I'm reading the second one, she's, I can hear her breathing shallow in a bit. Mm. And I can tell she's dropping off, but she's dropping off with that story in her head. Yeah, exactly. It's the and then they dream, the imagination in it. They go off and they yeah. sleep with imagination. Mm. It's fantastic. And I, I, to be honest, I, I watch kind of, I don't know, Paw Patrol, all this stuff with her. <laughs> I know all the theme tunes off by heart now, to be honest. But there's, there's an advert the other day, I don't know how they've done it, but it, your mobile phone, you clip something onto it, and it um, it's like a disc, and it'll project the story onto the ceiling. Oh, I, I haven't seen that. So you can you can read the story to her, like in the stars or whatever, and, and um, the books come along, it's like a clip over the lens, right. so it'll, it'll, and it'll 
play the story out and you can read it to her in the room with the light off. That's good. So I, I, I have to check that out. I think that's a good idea as well. Yeah, it's it is a, good. It's a different kind of thing, but she loves... She, I'm an author, I know that, but she loves books. She's got a stack of them there. Yeah. And when my wife and I are out somewhere, we can't resist picking up a picture book or something, another one for her, um, and either perhaps we pop into a, a craft fair or something, or a bookshop, or a, um, and it's, oh, look, there's another one for her. So she has got a, quite a stack of books, but she pulls them out all the time. Yeah. And she wants them read to her, and that's what it's all about. And she, the more we can keep her reading, I don't know if she can, because you know, all kids have got to read because um, the subjects, they've got to read for the subjects. Yeah, exactly. And the worst thing for me, which I hate, which I, I'll never be able to change, if I've got my table and my books there and we're at a, a, a book convention or a craft fair or some kind of event going on, it happened the weekend, um, we went to a Comic Con and parents came past, they were buying all what I ca call the rubbish thing, the things that light up and flash. Right, and yeah. I could see a couple of kids walking past, oh, mum, books. And mum held her head and led it out, away from the table, so she didn't have the books. And I thought, uh, that, that drives yeah, you'd rather the worst into me, city. if I'm honest. Yeah, I thought that little girl wanted to look at them, even if they didn't buy them. Yeah. Just to look at the books, because uh, it's hard getting kids to read. When they're 10, boys and girls, they... they they got too many distractions. There's too many of these YouTubers and stuff. There's too much distraction in in the the internet world. Yeah. But the you know, paperback or hardback books, picture books. There's there's brilliant authors out there. They write fantastic stories. And I was bought. My parents, to be honest, weren't. Um, they were hardworking people. My father was a miner. My mother used to work for like home help, that kind of thing. So they didn't spend a lot of time with books. So I picked that up myself. I started coming to here, Tonopandi Library, yeah. and I uh, there was a small children's section back in the 70s. So I read all the children's books, and to be honest, I shouldn't tell them no, but I went on, I was reading stuff like James Bond, <laughs> and, and then Jaws and all that, and I was a bit young to read them. But now, there are so many children's authors out there. There's an array of children's books, yeah. of all different genres. Uh, young adult fiction is amazing now dystopian futures with things crumbling and falling apart and um, the world coming to an end and Hunger Games, Maze Runner, yeah. all that kind of stuff, which I love, if I'm honest. So I, I base a lot of my stories being chased on alleyways yeah. and um, mazes that move around, trapdoors and buttons you shouldn't press. Do I, love press stuff the like button. I love it. And that's what I pour into all my books. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, I've got this manuscript with the publisher, i got Wizards, uh, exile, which is modern day wizards living in sky cities. If you if you want to check that out on Amazon or whatever, it's about a boy, an engineer, and a wizard. Wizards dressed in normal clothes, nice. but they banished to um, Skytras prison. The Skytras prison is thousands of miles above the ground, so there's no escape. There's nowhere to go. Cold, but they've, yeah. they've got to get out of there, and they've got to, on a quest to find obsidian. So how do they get out? And there's sky pirates. And there's, um, I don't want to give too much away, there's no, lots, obviously, there's no. lots going on, but I, I, there's a boy in there, and the boy, um, is he just an ordinary boy, or does he figure in the story as well? And I've, I've thrown dragons in there, first time I ever used dragons, Yeah. I've got a blue dragon and a black dragon, I mean you've got Game of Thrones and stuff, but I've got Shard and Ruin, these two dragons that are implemented into the story, and Wizards uh, Kingdom hasn't got any dragons in it's got wizards, it's got witches, it's got trolls, yeah. it's got uh, weird little creatures, but it has no um, dragons in there, so I've introduced these in there. And uh, it's, cause I, I love fantasy. I love Lord of the Rings, I love Game of Thrones. Yeah, I think a lot of people do, don't they? All them, they love, love books like that, it's, it's awesome. Well, they're mythical, they're, they're, they're griffins and, and dragons aren't real, but if you ask any kid, do you know what a, do you know what a dragon is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they, <laughs> and then they're on films and stuff, so really speaking, they are there in, in the background, aren't they? And yeah. And Harry Potter, they feature a lot of stuff like that. I just love um, mythical stuff, and I like trapdoors, and I like condos that um, you've got to try and escape from. I like, it takes you into a different world, uh, and this is what my stories are all about. They pull you in, yeah. and, uh, and then they, they keep you in there. I mean, the story, the manuscript they got at the moment, I wouldn't say too much, but it's about a boy who gets sucked into a video game. It's been done with Wreck-It Ralph and 
different things, but um, you've got to compete against the programs to try and get up to that. Yeah. But um, stories that give you ideas. My washing machine gave me the idea for Crown Tech 1. Mad, isn't it? Oh my uh, god. Yeah, and um, ideas could come from anywhere. And that's, that's what it went. I, I see something and I'll implement it into my story. I'll pick up a name from somewhere. I think, oh, that'd be a, a, a good maybe title for a character. Or I'll see. Or I can remember uh, years ago I worked in. Um, when I gave up my job, I worked in a, a kitchen factory. I wouldn't say what the factory was. Yeah. But I, I can remember I was in the warehouse and I walked onto the loading bay. And I, one of my colleagues came up to me and I looked across and he was coming towards afternoon. And it was like uh, November, so it was starting yeah. to get dark. And there were the trees there, and you had um, the lampposts which were curved over. Yeah. And they were curved over the, the, the trees. And I looked like that, and my colleague came up to me and he said, Carl, what are you looking at? I said, look, look at the lamp over there. Doesn't it look like as if there's an alien peering over the, the trees? He said, Carl, <laughs> he said, Carl it's a lamppost. But you were, you were off again, you know, writing ideas down. <laughs> and funnily enough, um, a friend of mine last night, he, um, he said, he uh, messaged me on Facebook, he worked in another factory with me, and he said, Carly, I just watched a video on, my, on Netflix with my boys called, um, oh, what's it called, something Christmas, Mr. Christmas or something, right. which is a, it's about um, Dickens when he was writing the Christmas stories, mm. and he said, it reminded me of you, when something like you'd write it down, you'd be counting stock, yeah. coming to your head, and you'd add it on there. I can remember being on the end of a conveyor belt, and... <laughs> I was in the kitchen factory, they laid a lot of people off nice. and they had to take me out of the stores and put me on the end of the line and I hated it and the kitchen units were coming down but you had to wait in between and I had a drawer mm. and in the drawer I had a pad, kind of like this and I was like, oh. write that down, put it back in there. <laughs> I was like, it, are you proud of me? Yeah, put it back in there and I'd have loads of ideas like that. <laughs> but um, one factory I was in which closed down when he went and I knew I was being laid off in two months time. Mm. And I was the only one on my shift on afternoons, and I had half an hour's shift in eight hours. That's all the work I had, because right. they were running me down. So I was writing one of my books I wrote actually there. I finished it off before I finished the job. That's mad. And, and I wouldn't say what book it was, no. but, <laughs> but, but it came out, and um, yeah, I used my time for that. I was writing the short stories and emailing them to myself. Mm. I'd done my work, there's nothing else I could do. So if I got spare time, I'll write an idea down and pop it in there. Yeah. But I, I, I'll, I'll write on a pad, like that, or I'll write on a laptop. I, it, it doesn't matter, you know, the ideas could come anytime. Mad. I'm thinking now, are you anything in this room you're looking at now and thinking, oh, well, that's a good idea? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not. Um, I mean, my, my stories are, are read by a lot of people now, and I, I am a fully-fledged author, but I'm not different to anybody else. Yeah. It's just that if I look at a room, I think, I look at it slightly differently. You could have a, you could have a room like this, which is um, eggshell walls, they can colour blind, I don't know what colour the walls are, yeah. and it could be like an apple in the middle of the table, I think, oh, where did the apple come from? Why is it there? And I start, how did it get in there? The door's locked, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it'll start me going. Oh, oh that's awesome. It's obviously, it is. I know you say you know different criminals, but obviously it is a talent because not many people do think like that. Yeah. It done, it's not the first thing that comes in their head, is it? So yeah. to me, that just shows that is where the talent is, isn't it? Well, I, I liked um, watching uh, TV when I was a kid. I liked Thunderbirds. I mean, they were the puppets and they, they, yeah. they're animated, don't they? And there was a thing called Time Tunnel, where these uh, scientists invented a tunnel that could take them to the time of dinosaurs or the Greek Romans and all that. It was only like a, a spark and a plume of smoke, you know, an old BBC series, whereas now it's all like CGI and stuff. And I can remember, and this is embarrassing because I've never said this before, when I was about nine, I had an old piece of flex. My father cut off something with a plug on one end, so I wrapped it on my waist like a belt. Yeah. And um, I thought then that I was a superhero, and I ended up, it was a plug, and I swung it on, I could climb up buildings and mountains with it, <laughs> and I knocked it on there, and stuff like that. So I must have stemmed from that. Yeah, definitely. And I can remember watching Man from Uncle, and they could talk to their phones, well, uh, and all their watches. Yeah. And now you can actually do it with Apple Watches and stuff, can you? Yeah, exactly. On Star Trek, you have these flip communicators. Flip phones are old, aren't they? So all that stuff, I thought, wow, that's amazing. To people now, they just talk to each other, didn't they? 
Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's all evolved. So it's all, some of it isn't even science fiction anymore. Now it's science fact, isn't it? Yeah. You can talk to somebody, you can, and you can, I can talk to somebody face to face if they're in China right now, couldn't I? Yeah, exactly. It's mad, I know. Face time, is it? Amazing. So, see, if the book fair is coming up and everything like that, and, the, and your book, new book, is launch, is launching. So, what's the next step now? So, you've got the new, the well, new manuscript. We've got the 7th of September on a Saturday is on the book fair. Yeah. Wizards Exile came out this year, but I didn't do a formal launch, so I may do it at my book fair anyway. Yeah. I've got a book coming out uh, in 2020, because I've had a Myers Imagination and Wizards Exile are 2019. 2020, I've signed a contract, I've done the book, it's with the publishers at the moment, uh, it's with Thunderpoint Publishing, they're coming towards the book fair as well. Right, okay. Uh, it's a book of short stories. It's the um, the man with the black shoe box and other strange stories. So that's coming up with them in 2020. Um, they are interested in something else that I've partially written. Right. Uh, which is steampunk. I don't know if you know the, st the term steampunk. No, I don't. Steampunk is dealing with adventures with wheels and pulleys and engines and steam engines okay. and clocks and cogs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I've written something which two brothers get sucked into a different world and it's really oh, um, oddball they end up like a western <laughs> town but the horses are stainless steel right i know <laughs> yep. this is mad. yeah which is the steampunk element and i've got all different things going on there so um i when i signed the contract with the new publisher because i've got that publisher which is the point which are bringing that out they said oh i'd like to see that so i said well it's not quite finished and then i'd written something else which was um about the boy getting sucked into the video game with another publisher. Right. And they are really eager to have a look at that once it's finished. So that may go to them. I won't mention who they are because I haven't signed anything yet. So um, so I've got that going on. And I think I've got a couple of projects I haven't finished, which my wife said to me in like 2015, right, you've got seven projects which you haven't finished. You can't do this anymore you've got to finish these projects off because you're doing half the stories and you're not finishing them. Yeah. So she said, why don't you start with that one? Well, it was Wizard's Exile. Right. So I went back over Wizard's Exile, I finished it, sent it, and Pegasus wanted it. So they took that on, which is a book now. My youngest son, Ryan, the one who I wrote Wizard's Kingdom for, mm -hmm. he did the cover for Ghosted. He's a creative designer now in London. Yeah. And he did the cover for Ghosted. Um, and I may be working on a project with him later on because he wants to bring out a series or something. Oh. So there's always something going on in the background. Um, yeah, exactly. I always try and, like I said, the YouTube channel, that's been exciting, to be honest, because you do all these podcasting things. Yes. And all of a sudden, I'm doing these videos. And I'm doing, but I, before, I try and do, when I was doing the old kind of video, I try and do the whole thing without making a mistake and just put it up there. Now, yeah. now I can edit it. Yeah. And I can, like they would do on Wales Today, they, they interview somebody and then they can't, like you do with this probably. Yeah, it does, yes. And, and I can put any background because I've got a green screen. Or I can do something on the move with my phone and you can still edit it, can't you? Yeah. And you can put graphics on the screen. Because what I'm going to do with my YouTube channel, I, I'm telling everybody how to write the story, but then I'm going to put a promotional video up with graphics on it, showing them what my books are. Because they know about what I do, but they don't know about my back up of yeah, the moment exactly. and what my books are. So I'm going to work a little bit with video, get back into the writing until I hit the end of September. Once I hit the end of September, it'll be travelling to schools then. Yeah. That, that'll take, I'll be hotels, I'll be travelling from school to school, coming home, being with the wife for like two, three days. Back off. <laughs> I love her. Yeah, and then she'll be going off to where she's going. So yeah. we'll, we'll be like ships passing in the night from September on because I get bookings coming through at any time. Yeah, exactly. And it, maybe the YouTube channel will create bookings from schools as well. I think it def definitely will. And I, and I would like, I don't know if it's ever going to work, but I would like to think of a class full of kids in the hall with a drop-down screen with uh, watching my YouTube videos to help them to get their stories up and running. Yeah. I don't know if it will. There, there are much better authors out there, but I think my videos are quirky. They short, you've seen them yourself. Yeah. And I try and make them as funny as I can. Um, it's really awkward talking to a lens. <laughs> yeah, and, I know. And, and the worst thing for me is trying to do it live. Mm. Doing Because I, I did a video last year live and I was waiting for questions to come in and they weren't. 
and nice. you're, you're going to try and fill that spot in. Yeah, so exactly. I, I'd rather record it and you can taper it to what you want and then put it out there when it's ready. Yeah, that's me. I'd rather do it like that as well. And um, somebody showed me the other day that you can actually put like I don't know, auto cue thing up. You can put the words that comes over the lens. Yeah, so yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, like they do when they do in a, a television program. Mm -hmm. So because if you want to read something out and you've got it on a pad, it's like <laughs> yeah, you see the top of your head mostly. And if you've got it above or to the side of the lens, it's like um, yeah, hello everybody, uh, and you're whipping back and forth. Yeah, that's why I try and um, memorize it. And I go over and over and over and I say, yeah, and then when you try and speak, it doesn't come out with what you want to say. Yeah, you've exactly. Got, you've got it all in your head and then, oh, cut that off. But you can, you can run a video and mess it up and then run it again, just leave it run and then chop it up at the Yeah, end. that's what I do. You can always cut it up and everything, just carry on, that's what you say. Definitely. Well, fabulous. So obviously, I will tag all your information underneath yep. on the YouTube channel and in the Instagram posts and Facebook. Yep. And if anybody wants audiobooks, it's all on Amazon. Yeah. yeah? And, and you can them. come to my website for them as well, my contact page. And the website, amazing. Yeah. And I will definitely come to the book, book, uh, book fair. Well, you were interviewing the authors there, aren't you? Yes. I've sent, I've sent an email to all, all of them and they're expecting you to come in yeah. theatre. Yeah, I Are definitely. Are you bringing you, the children with you? Or? I will bring my children, but my husband will have to come. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him at the meeting. Yeah, to be honest, he will have it. He writes, he sta he's writing a story now, to be honest. He's been writing it for about a year. Yeah. Um, it say it's about 20 pages long yeah. and he keeps, he's doing like you do, he's going back and forth, back and forth, mm. back and forth, so yeah, it's buildings, I, he'll, pro, he'll come and I bet he'll have, he'll have more questions probably than oh, any of us, because he's really uh, interested in this story that he's writing. I get lots of um, people coming on to me saying, can you give us advice, and this is what the book fair is all about. Yeah. If you are writing something, you've got 22 people there who have been through it. And they're doing different versions and their own versions, and you can you can pick the brains of all of them. And then the best thing is to go into the author panel and ask questions of the authors because they'll do their talks with Matt will be interviewing them. Yeah. And then you can say, okay, they'll do a Q and A and say, uh, how do you do this? How did you manage that? Where do I go with this? How do I get a publisher? And that's how I did it. Yeah. I, I had to try and feel my way. I didn't just get thrown publishing deals. But uh, you can put stuff up on Amazon now off your own back, which but it's got to be edited, it's got to yeah, be good, yeah. and it's got to be um, proofread by other people who not necessarily best friends. You need people who are not best friends who will give you a, an, an honest opinion. An honest opinion, opinion. Yeah. because if it's rubbish, you need to know it's rubbish. But what Definitely. I will say, whoever's listening to this, all you millions up there, <laughs> that um, expect, if you, if you want to be a writer, expect rejection. Yeah. Because I have honestly got a shoebox in my attic with 200 rejection letters, which I've sent to publishers. They don't want it. They don't want it. And you just keep pushing through. I've, st I've got publishing deals now. Yeah. Um, so my stuff must have been good. Otherwise, these publishers wouldn't put their faith in you because they've got to sell books to make their money back. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think with Pegasus, I've got four books with them, and I think we've sold about, I don't know, um, two and a half thousand books since I've been with them. God, so, nice. I mean, if the books weren't any good, you wouldn't sell the next one or the next one, would you? Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful meeting you. That's no problem. At all. Thank you for interviewing me. Yes, and I can't wait for the fair. That's going to be amazing. It's coming up in three weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for listening. Bye.